we want to make sure we're being careful because there are certain things to watch out for when making this transition. It's really easy to make mistakes. And the so let's just talk through a couple of those biggest mistakes. And as, a, as an overview, I would say, before even talking about the specifics, one of the most important things is to go slow and experiment carefully. So it's really easy to say, OK, carbs are great and eat a ton of carbs and any type of carbs. And I would say that's not a good idea and is probably going to lead you to some type of gut issues, some type of bloating, weight gain, feeling very yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. It, you might feel some benefits, but there's also going to definitely going to be some drawbacks. So going slow and experimenting carefully, I think, is pretty important and will make. So even if you make an, a mistake when you're doing that, it allows you to backtrack pretty easily. You can pretty easily determine what that mistake was due to, or at least more easily than when you make a bunch of changes at once. Yeah. So, I, well, what I'd say is the thing is you can try anything for a week. You know, you're not going to gain 50 pounds in a week. So if you do something for a week and you're not feeling well, and, and there's other symptoms besides gaining 50 pounds, but right. a lot of people, when they add in carbs, they're worried about weight gain. And when you look at the physiology in regards to how fast you can actually put on fat tissue, I mean, you could put on water weight real fast, but as far as putting on fat tissue in one week, you're not going to get fat. Right. So it's relatively, it's actually, it's really an irrational fear to think, oh, I'm going to try carbs. We all going to get fat. You may get water weight. You may get some water weight if it's not agreeing with you, whatever is going on, but you're not going to get fat. Um, you may have some other symptoms depending on whatever you're doing. Uh, and it's important to, to do one thing at a time mm -hmm. and to try that thing out. Even if it's not for a full week, I would say try a week, but even if it's for a few days, just try it out and just be aware of how you feel not only right after you eat something, but down the line. So say you eat, if you're eating some fruit, when it goes in, it's fine. If your small intestine is clear, you shouldn't have a problem. But if your colon has a dysbiosis and then it hits the colonic environment, whatever fibers in there, if it has uh, any type of fermentable sugar in it, then you start to get symptoms. But that won't manifest. It can manifest four hours later when it hits the colon. Or if it hits, if there's different sections of the colon that have issues, say you have an uh, overgrowth or an issue is specifically in the sigmoid section of your colon, 24 hours later, when you got to go to the bathroom or 24 to 48 hours, whatever, however long your colonic tran transit time is, you can get it, you can start to get it as symptoms then. So it's really important to take a few days and to see what's going on because things might not hit you right away. And then the mm -hmm. other thing to keep in mind is sometimes it may not be a dysbiosis, sometimes there's an issue with the food. And you're, you're interacting with the food and then you can get a symptom right away as soon as it as soon as it, it hits some people, they eat fruit, some fruits and it bothers them as soon as it hits their mouth, they get a itchy mouth or I don't know what the specific uh, the specific symptom is. But there's yeah. there's different weird reactions like that. So it's important to keep those things in mind or becoming very mucousy or something like that. Um, I don't know. Do you want to mention specific foods that are good to try out to start specifically for carbs for carnivores? Yeah, so. Yeah, so I would say to kind of uh, to sum it up, there are two things I would say that we want to consider the most when we're bringing carbs back in, and if we so you had, so if these things so the two things would be gut health, and that includes our ability to digest the food, and then also the what other things might be digesting the food, some sort of pathogenic bacteria and things. The other side of it is the metabolism side. So our thyroid function, our reproductive function, how well we're able to convert that food to energy. And that can be dependent on gut health as well. But on the other side too, if you've been in a stress state for so long and the, your metabolism has been depressed for so long, it can take a little while before it catches back up and, and actually starts to use the food that you're taking in, the fuel, and convert it to energy as opposed to storing it as fat. So those would be the two main components that I would be considering when trying to add in something like carbohydrates and seeing which ones are ideal is, is looking at it through those two uh, lenses. And some things to watch out for symptom-wise that you had mentioned. If, and these could, so it, as far as the gut health side goes, if you're noticing any sort of digestive symptoms, GERD or indigestion or bloating or swelling or holding a lot of water weight in, in your midsection or major changes in your bowel movements as far as uh, consistency goes, whether it's a lot of constipation or, or loose stool on the other side, those are all important symptom, uh, symptoms to keep an eye on as far as whether you're digesting this food well, whether it's feeding gut bacteria, that kind of thing. And 
there are other symptoms as well skin health and anxiety i mean are all things that are can be tied in with this brain fog but so so those would kind of be things that might indicate more of a of a gut health issue or not digesting the food well so, something in that realm and then on the other side if you're noticing that you're not having too many symptoms but you're gaining weight and when you're eating more and you've eaten a significant significantly increased the amount that you're eating then that and you're noticing that you know you're just putting on body fat from that that can be a suggestion that your metabolism hasn't caught quite up yet it's still depressed and it can just take time to move it out of that space so with those things in mind yeah there are certain foods that we would suggest probably trying first as far as carbs go that are safest that are least likely to cause gut issues and that are least least likely to cause metabolic issues so the first ones that come to mind for me, one is honey, which of course, uh, Paul Saladino has been saying that's been the best one for him. He had tried some rice and, and I think some fruit, but those can be harder to digest if you have gut issues. And those gut issues are also dependent on metabolism. If our metabolism is functioning well, then we can digest that food better and we're less likely to have dysbioses. But again, we've talked about that in the past and I'll link to those things. But So honey can be probably one of the safest options. After that, I would probably say good quality fruit juice is a good one to try and high quality fruits and then i would say uh, potatoes sweet potatoes uh, and you know all different forms of, of the potatoes and sweet potatoes so a lot of times the easier ones to digest are the the smaller varieties of the potatoes not the russets but the uh, like the new potatoes the red or yellow ones uh, or purple potatoes and then sweet potatoes same thing some of the you can you can do the regular sweet potatoes or like the japanese ones or, or the white ones the purple ones there's all sorts of different types but those would be kind of my first go-tos and then white rice can be okay as well for some people but for the most part sticking to more of those sugars are easier to digest i would suggest starting with those sugars first honey fruit juice and high quality fruits uh as opposed and that can be frozen fruit as well as opposed to starting with those starches but the starches are still some people do better with the starches so it's not quite that clear cut but that would kind of be the general things i would look to as far as bringing in carbs what do you think of that yeah, I agree. I think that white potatoes and white rice uh, are a lot easier to digest for most people than sweet potatoes. Um, and I would put, at least in my experience, because uh, the sweet potatoes do have fermentable carbohydrates in there, whereas the white potatoes and white rice don't really have them, especially if they're not heated and then recooled, which forms resistant starch. Um, and then as far as specific fruit juices, a lot of people will try out apple juice first, and I think that that's a bad idea. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Because uh, the apple juice ha is a high amount of fructose relative to glucose, and it also has a high amount of sorbitol in it, which is a sugar alcohol. Um, and so that can actually cause bloating, gas, and diarrhea because we don't di we don't digest all the fructose and sorbitol, and then it hits the uh, it hits the colon and it forms an osmotic laxative, and it causes a bacterial like an explosion of fermentation. So I think that the best juices to start with, or the the best ones in my experience, are a um, uh, then they should be a hundred percent juice mm -hmm. concentrate or not, not from concentrate is the best, but if you're going to go with concentrate because the cost or whatever, I mean, it should, it's not going to kill you. Um, it would be a good quality orange juice, which tends to be the cheapest and easiest to find, uh, relative to other juices, relative not within, to other within orange juice. It'll be one of the more expensive orange juices. Yeah. But yeah. orange juice, as far as fruit juice goes, is one of the easiest and cheapest to find. Mm -hmm. Then the next one, it would be pineapple juice. Uh, that one actually digests easy for a lot of people, in my experience. Um, another good one could be like a clear grape juice. Uh, usually the, the, the dark purple grape juice has actually like a pretty potent effect, in my experience. Um, whereas the, the white grape juice or the green grape juice, whichever one it is, those ones tend to, to, tend to not be as potent and still give a... A pretty good effect um so those would be the first three that i would try uh the reason i cho choose these is because they have a one-to-one -one fructose to glucose ratio and they don't have any fermentable carbohydrates in them or sugar alcohols like pear juice or apple juice has the mm -hmm. bad thing about most juices though is since pear juice and apple juice is one of the most pro widely produced and cheapest most quality juices or or i guess in this case non-quality juices are cut with those juices and then you can get symptoms from those. And then right. additives to juices can also cause issues for people like citric acid or ascorbic acid. Or um, though some of the really bad ones have different preservatives. And those can irritate you as well. And, and just in my experience, having just like a quality pineapple orange juice won't give me symptoms. But if I try a, a crappy 
orange juice or a crappy pineapple juice with some additives, I can get stuffy nose and feel a little bit off with them. So it really is important. The quality of the food is really important. And as yep. far as honey goes, some people really do tolerate it. Um, I think the lighter varieties give people less symptoms than the super dark varieties. You know, everyone goes with the super dark ones because, oh, it's more plant compounds, more polyphenols, whatever, whatever, whatever. But at the end of the day, a lot of those compounds can be irritating to people. Um, and a and lot of those... On the, and depending on the amount, they have a lot of benefits yeah. to them, especially as far as, gut, as the gut is concerned. But... But yeah, the, but the really too much dark, be. yeah, the really dark ones tend to have really high amounts, and uh, and the wild wildflower honeys are usually when are usually multiple different uh, flowers that the bees uh, pollinate and bring and create the honey from, and in that case, um, the the numerous types of pollens or plant compounds from the different and different flowers and things like that can be irritating to some people and things like that. So the clearer honeys tend to do pretty well. One of the best ones that, that's my favorite is a clover blossom honey. And that's a very light colored white honey. And it tastes pretty good overall. Yeah. I mean, those are all really good points as far as all of those things go. A couple of things I would add as far as juices and fruit goes. Organic is typically pretty important. There's some good resources there. But the pestis- a lot of that's in terms of pesticides that people are concerned. But beyond the pesticides, the ones that are organic are grown in typically much better conditions and because of they can't use the pesticides the soil quality is often different they're higher in nutrients typically they're higher in they're they're sweeter and they have higher amounts of uh, sugar is one of those nutrients compared to a lot more of the acidic components which can be problematic so that's something to consider and you had meant again kind of talking about potatoes and sweet potatoes i've noticed some people who do better with sweet potatoes than regular and then vice versa so again yeah experimentation is is key there for all of these things and We've, we did actually an episode that was almost entirely talking about fruits, the different types, how to get the best quality and, and what those differences are. So I will reference that. But I think overall, those are the main things that I would want to consider, at least in the beginning when making this transition from any sort of low carb keto, but especially, uh, especially carnivore and raw primal towards this sort of approach is, is going slow and steady, starting with one thing at a time slowly the first things i would kind of look to would be slowly increasing the carbs through these sources that we've talked about 